Good morning, New Good morning, Dawn. New Dawn. Good morning, Happy Pastor Sunday. Joanne. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy everything. See you. God is good. Yes. It's a always good all the time. Day. I just uh I'm just so grateful for what took place last week at Resurrection Sunday. Just great services and we know that Jesus was glorified and yeah. and we're just so pumped up about what what he's going to do today. Amen. Yes. We want to welcome our guests, too. If you're watching for the first time, we want to welcome you. My name is Pastor Erwin Guevara. This is my wife, Pastor Joanne Guevara. And we get to pastor New Dawn Christian Village over here in Los Angeles. And uh, what's been exciting is that over the past year, we've actually been gaining members that live outside of the state of California. And that is awesome. Yes, so if is. you're watching from somewhere else, uh, we, we'd love to send you information about our church. Amen. And Joanne, why don't you just share with our guests today how they can connect with us? Yes. So if you're our guest today, welcome. We're so happy that you're here. Um, we send you a big virtual hug from New Dawn. Um, our staff and our church leaders and our worshipers. Amen. So you can send us that email to connect at newdawnla.com. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, just slip it on in there. We would love yeah. to agree with you and pray with you because we do believe in prayer. We believe that prayer works and God is on the throne. Amen. And he's still answering all our prayers in Jesus name. Amen. Yeah. Well, we want to pray with you. Um, we're going to get ready for worship and it's going to be a powerful time and you will be blessed. Why don't you invite someone out? If you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, man, just let someone know like, hey, come check out this service with me. Well, let's worship the Lord together. So I want to pray for you. Father, we ask that your blessing upon each and every person that's watching today. Holy Spirit, minister to them, encourage them, strengthen them. God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven over our lives. So Lord, we, we prepare our hearts for worship yes. right now to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's get ready for worship. Love you guys. Love you. Morning, New Dawn Christian Village family and friends. Thank you for choosing to be with us this morning. I want to encourage you to worship the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your mind, your body, and soul this morning. The name of Jesus should be lifted high. What is the highest praise? Hallelujah is the highest praise. We give it all to you this morning, God. We give it all to you. So sing with us. Worship him with us this morning. Here we go. The name of Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high in this place. The name of Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus is lifted high in this place. Sons and daughters shall be saved, shall be saved, shall be saved. Sons and daughters shall be saved in this place. Sons and daughters shall be saved, shall be saved, shall be saved. Sons and daughters shall be saved. Release your glory on us now, on us now, on us now. Release your glory on us now in this place. Release your glory on us now, on us now, on us now. Release your glory on us now. So release, 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 release in this place. So release your glory, release your power, release. 
this moment. Right wherever you are, wherever you may be, whether it's in your living room, your room, even in your kitchen, if you have a cup of coffee in your hand, I just want you to put that down and I want you to declare this out with me this morning. Lift your hands and begin to worship the Father right now. With every lip, with every heart, with every mind, to begin to speak well of the Savior this morning. Put a praise on your lips this morning. Hallelujah. To the Lamb that was slain for us on Calvary. Come on, lift your hands and sing this with us. Praise is what I do. It's what I do. Come on, it's real simple. It's real simple. Just sing it out with us. Praise is what I do is what I do. Come on, somebody make the devil mad this morning. Make the devil mad this morning. Come on. Praise is what I do. Morning, my new dawn family it is so great to be with you and uh, i know that you were just so blessed with our worship time i just love it man i feel the presence of the lord it is so good you know here we are post resurrection sunday and and just had an amazing sunday last week i just want to thank all those people that were that joined us online and that also joined us uh in the live services it was just amazing thank you to tasia you did a great job at 6 30 a.m and of course at three and and our worship team did an amazing job and i just know that the presence of the holy spirit moves so powerfully at 3 p.m if, if you were there you know what i'm talking about and god is just so faithful love you guys and i'm just excited about this season i'm excited about this word that i'm going to give you because i believe it's prophetic it's where we're going and god is going to do great things through our church you know i actually uh, feel led to do something right now i just want to pray for some folks and uh you know, we just came off of worship where we just gave God worship and praise. But I want to pray for folks right now uh, for the, those that feel led to give or that will give today. I, I just thank you for all the faithful people that sow into New Dawn Christian Village. And I just want to pray for you now. I normally do this later, but I want to pray for you. And uh, we're just going to give God glory with our tithe and with our offering. On the right hand side of your screen, you'll see four different ways that you can give. And uh, or you can give through the P.O. Box, through PayPal on NewDawnLA.com, uh, through Cash App. And then you can also text the word GIVE to 888-897-8172, 888 888- Eight nine seven eight one seven two. I just, I just wanted to pray for you. I just, I really feel led to do that. And you know, as we pray right now, I'm just going to ask if, if the Holy Spirit puts something on your heart, that you would be sensitive to that and say, Lord, I'm going to worship you with this because I feel like we're in a season of sowing in big ways where we're going to see a mighty harvest of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to pray for you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Love you. Love you. Love you guys. Amen. So, Father, we just bless you. 
And we bless those people that are giving today. We know that it's worship unto you. It is holy. And I ask, Father, for your supernatural touch over folks right now. That, God, your supernatural hand would be upon them. Father, that the favor of you, Lord, the favor of God would be upon them and their family, their house, their job, everything they do. God, let your peace rest upon us. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and we love you, Lord. We just honor you. We owe you everything. And so we worship you with this seed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for your faithfulness. And I want to just get into the word here. You know, we're in an exciting season uh, on so many levels, but here we are coming off Resurrection Sunday. And, 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 and I want you to just picture what was happening with Jesus. I, saw, I wish so much that I could just have been there when Jesus is unfolding his plan to them. And, and you know, one of the first things that Jesus did, he actually had to show himself to them and prove that he was alive, right? So he had, to, he had to prove that he was resurrected and he is our resurrected king. So, so coming out of the tomb and all of that, what he had to do, he had to reveal himself to his people. You know, the second thing that he do, began to do is he began to teach out of the scriptures and the Old Testament, of course, but he began to refer to the things that he showed them while he, uh, before the crucifixion, and he began to reveal the kingdom of God, the plan of heaven. So he revealed himself, then he had to reveal the plan, right? But the third thing that he had to do is that he had to equip them. He had to equip them, and how did he do that? He said, hey, listen, go to Jerusalem. And I'm going to give you something that will help you to do what I need you to do on the earth. Actually, what I created you to do. And God is so faithful that he gave them and he presented them with the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And, and uh, you know, when, when the Holy Spirit hit them, they were actually able to refocus, right? I want, I want to explain that. They were able to refocus and continue the work that they were doing before Jesus went to the cross, right? Because they were doing kingdom work. Jesus showed them what a life uh, surrender to the Father looks like. And Jesus did many things to minister to people. So they refocused and they began to do the plan. But, the, you know, and obviously when they received that, um, he, you know, he was he was saying, now be my hands, be my feet, uh, be my voice on the earth. And, and that's what the church did. And the church began to flourish. Amen. I want to speak a word about your identity and your DNA and what God placed in each and every one of you. You know, there's some messages that I, that I preach and teach that, um, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is going to relate to really this percentage of people. And then the others will just think, okay, that was good. You know, it's the word of God. But I want to say this to you, every single person that's watching, this relates to you. It is 100 percent like in uh, in your business, in your mail, right in your face. It's good stuff that will encourage you. Amen. You know, lately, um, for some reason, I just I don't know what it is. And, and it's a good thing. But I've been reflecting on my marriage. I've been reflecting on my wife. And uh, and for and I don't know, maybe I saw a picture of when we were younger. I don't know. I, I think it was maybe the other day I was it, it, I, we have this second bedroom where I put this little workout machine and I think I was working out and I saw a picture of our wedding and I was I was just thinking of the simplicity of our relationship when we first started you know it was just simple it was just like hey I like you I'm attracted to you um, I already knew her so I knew things about her I knew she was godly and uh, I was attracted to that and I was attracted to her physically and and you know it was just like this mystery right where we get to know one another but one of the things that is so powerful, a revelation that just hit me, is that I had a private world that she was not exposed to. And as my relationship with her began to unfold, I invited her into my private life and vice versa, right? So so I, I remember when she met my parents. I remember when she went to the first family party. Uh, you know, I began to talk to her about my dreams, my hopes, my visions, and, and all of that took time. But I invited her 
her into my private world. You know, I was running a business and, and, and so, you know, I just said, this is what I do. And, and so she began to understand the private things of my life because I invited her into that because we were building in a, rela a relationship. And I want you to keep that in mind as I unfold this message today. Um, I, the title of my message today is A Full Follower of Christ. Come on, say that with me. A Full Follower of Christ. I want to be a fully devoted follower of Christ. And you know, there's a simplicity and a pureness to our relationship with God. I want you to see this powerful scripture, and I know you've heard it a million times, but I want you to just see something in here, maybe that you may not have reflected on before. Amen. And it's in Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. And it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease or every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, come on, say, but when he, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and they were scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest field. You know, there's two segments of that paragraph. Obviously, when he's praying for people and ministering to them, you know, I really call that the acts of God, right? So he is releasing the will of the Father, the love of the Father to humanity. So when he was praying for sick folks or maybe someone was uh, full of demons or just even under demonic bondage or even emotional bondage or in lack where they needed food or whatever it was, when, when you saw Jesus perform these acts or these miracles, we're going to call them, um, it was the acts of God. But something switched. But it says, but when he saw the multitude, he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because there was two things that he was seeing. They were weary and they were scattered. Let me say that again. They were weary and they were scattered. And so I love the heart of God because that second part has to do with relationship. It has to do with sonship. It has to do that where we know God. So there's the acts of God and then there's the relationship of God. And when those two are flourishing together, it is an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, you know, in John chapter 21, verses uh, 1 to 6, yeah, let's look at 1, one to 6. It'll come up on your screen. And I want to make this declaration. Jesus can change everything. Come on, in one moment, Jesus can change everything. In verse 1, it says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, listen, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. I want to say this to you. Jesus gets involved and helps people. Jesus gets involved and helps people. I preach this message. Many of you are familiar. It's like it's time for a right side moment, a right side moment where God says, hey, listen, you were doing this and you were catching nothing, but I want you to do this and you're going to see that I have something there for you. And you know what the important thing is? The important thing is there's people out there that say, I don't know who I am. I don't know God. I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. My heart is broke. I feel no purpose. I don't feel loved. And even me, I remember the day that I cried out and I said, God, I've tried everything to fulfill me. 
Today I give you my life. See, I tried so many things and I couldn't find, I needed a right side moment. I needed my nets that I was using in life and I was, I, I was trying to catch some stuff and I was catching nothing. But it was when I gave my heart to Jesus and I threw the nets of my life on the other side, I had a right side moment where God said, okay, now I'm going to show you what real life is all about. Come on, that's some good teaching right there. People need Jesus. They were created to know him. I want you to say this. I want to be a full follower of Christ. Can you say that with me? I want to be a full follower of Christ. Did you know that you were created to be a blessing? I want to ask that question today. Did you, do you know that you were created to be a blessing? It's part of of your DNA. I'm, I'm taking you somewhere, but I need you to see something powerful about your life. And it's all in the scriptures. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, listen to this. The Lord had said to Abram or Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I want you to take a look at the three things. There's four things here. I want you to take a look at the first three. And who doesn't want to hear these things? I know I would love to hear that. I know I love when I do hear that. Who doesn't want to hear these first three things? Listen to what he told, listen to what he told Abram. He said, you will be a great nation. Hallelujah. He said, I will bless you. Glory to God. Come on now. I thank you, God, for, for, for blessing me. Amen. And I will make your name great. So God here is saying, here's what I do. You'll be a great nation. I'll bless you and I'll make your name great. Well, who doesn't want to hear that? Of course. And there's nothing wrong with that. But here's what he said in the fourth thing. He said, you will be a blessing. You will be a blessing. And I want to put uh, in parentheses right now, get financial stuff and carnal material stuff out of here right now. Okay, I'm not saying that God doesn't do that. You know me and you know what I teach. I want you to think kingdom. He says you will be a blessing. I'm not talking about giving money away and all that. Said, Hear the spirit of the Lord. He said you'll be a blessing. And how can you be a blessing? We're going to get into it right now. You'll be a blessing. How can you truly bless others? And I'm going to show you this here in a moment. I want you to say this. I want to be a full follower of Christ. Come on, say that again. Come on. You can do this in your home. It is easy. I want to be a full follower of Christ. I want to, I want to show you something. I want to show you Jesus recruiting strategy. I want to show you uh, how he approached some prospective followers, right? So we're going to see here how he, he talked to these two folks right here that weren't followers, but I want to show you what he said to them because they were prospective followers. And this is, this is how he spoke to them in Matthew chapter four, verses 18 to 22. It says this, And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, follow me, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. What did he say? Come, follow me. Follow me, listen, and I will make you. I will, if you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Did that happen like right there? No, it didn't even happen in three and three years plus of Jesus's ministry. It didn't happen then either. Listen, he says, I will make you fishers of men. Follow me. Think about this. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Come on, say this. I want to be a full follower of Christ. See, God wants us to be fishers of men. Why? Because he loves people. I want to show you something that we're going to get acquainted with. Amen. I've been praying and I've been asking God. I said, just touch every viewer 
Every viewer from, in, in this series that we're doing, I just ask you to touch every viewer that, God, you would just put it on their heart that they would see that, A, you're called to be a blessing and that, you, that God desires that you be a full follower of Christ. And he says, if you follow him, he'll make you a fisher of men, a fisher of men. It is called the Frank list, F R. A N C. So the word Frank, the acronym broken down, we're going to go through it right now. And, and, and on your screen, you're going to see this diagram that, that will, you're going to see this bullseye diagram that comes up right now. And so in the bullseye, you, you see the word friends right in the middle of the bullseye. And then as the bullseye goes out, you see relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, and coworkers. I want you to have that frank list in your heart when we're done with this series of messages. What is the frank list? Well, you know what we're doing? I want to ask you to do two things between now and next week. Simple things. I want you to ask yourself, in that list right there, friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, and co-workers, who do I know in those groups that doesn't know Jesus. Now listen, don't, don't, get, don't get all like homework minded, okay? I just want to ask you something in your heart. Who do you know? I'm going to ask you a question as your pastor. What friends do you have that don't know Jesus? What relatives do you have that don't know Jesus? What acquaintances do you have that don't know Jesus? What neighbors do you have that don't know Jesus? What co-workers do you have that don't know Jesus? You know what? I just want you to do something. Would you take out a list, put it on your phone, email yourself, put it in your notes section of your phone, write it down on a pad. Can I ask you something? Who do you know that's not saved who doesn't know Jesus in those areas? Especially if you see right there your friends. And I want you to do something. Whoever God puts on your heart, I want you to write it down. Because some of us may have 50 people in one of those categories. But who is God putting on your heart? Could you put down one person for some of those categories or two people? And I want you to write it down. I want you to be prayerful about it and write it down. Say, Lord, who are you putting on my heart? And here's what I simply want you to do. I'm not telling you to talk to them or anything like that. Here's what I want you to do. Would you pray for them? Would you pray for them? Because here is the thing. I want to tell you something for, to a new dawn for those guests that are watching. What I'm saying to you is the heartbeat of God. He loves people. And part of your DNA is, is that as a follower of Jesus Christ, when Jesus said, follow me, he said, I'll make you fishers of men. Do you know this message is a, a maker of, of, of fishermen? You know, if, if I could say it that way, a maker, a fisherman, God is looking to encourage you in his word that you would fulfill who you really are. You were called to be a blessing. You are called to be a blessing. And how are you a blessing? What greater blessing is there that you would reveal truth to those that need it? God loves you so much, but you know, God loves your friends he loves your relatives, your acquaintances. He loves your neighbors and your co-workers. And I'm going to start a list and I'm going to say, God, who is, who is it that you put on my heart? I already was thinking of one neighbor. And I was like, I need to put that dude and his wife on my heart. You know, actually, in preparation for this message, I didn't memorize my neighbor's name across the way. And so I looked at one of his uh, uh, packages that, that Amazon had left there because I just, you know, I just wanted to be able to call him by his first name. And I was like, oh man, I'm so glad I saw that. But, but church, could you do something? I just want to give you something simple. Do what you were created to do. And the first thing that you can do is identify who in your sphere of your life, according to that Frank list, you know, who does not know Jesus? And would you write it down? And would you pray for them? If you're asking the question, Pastor, how do I reach people? How can God use me? I care about the message you just preached, Pastor. Well, what can I do? Well, can you pray? Can you take a moment and for the eternity of a soul 
take a moment and write down some names. I believe that you can. Let me just finish with this. I want to say this one more time. You were created to be a blessing. It's part of your nature because you were created in the image and likeness of God. There's no greater blessing that you can be than to be able to minister to someone who doesn't know God. And the first thing that you need to do is just pray. I'm just asking you to pray for them. Would you, would you daily just throw up a quick 30-second prayer and just say, Lord, touch you know, Joe or touch John or touch you know, Mary or touch Lewis or touch whoever, you know, and just begin to pray for the, for the salvation of that person. Amen. I want to pray with you guys right now. Father, I just thank you for everyone that's watching. I thank you for this message. And I thank you so much for the revelation of seeing Jesus tell his disciples, come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And God, as a full, as a, as a person who desires to be a full, just full on Christ follower, I just thank you in Jesus' name that you equip each and every one of us, that you just put that person on our heart. Lord, don't let this message turn into some kind of, 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 of bondage or just thing like, oh no, I, I don't feel like doing some homework. No, Lord, let it be a heart thing where our heart turns towards the lost and that we would just begin to pray. So Father, thank you for our friends, our relatives, our acquaintances, our neighbors, and our co-workers. We love you so much. And you know, if you're watching right now, before I let you go, if you're watching today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't have a relationship with him, I want to pray with you. Do you know the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. You know, today, if you're saying, Pastor, I want a relationship with Jesus. I want to put my faith or I put my faith in Jesus Christ and him alone for the salvation of my life. I want to I want to be a follower of Christ. I want you to pray with me right now. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you so much. I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. And I have sinned against you, and I'm sorry. Lord, fill me with your spirit. I want to know you greater. Use me, God, to do your will and your purpose. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, we would love for you to connect with us. There's two things I would love for you to do. If you prayed that prayer, whether you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, would you put, would you put in the comment section there, I received Jesus today. Amen. Would you let someone know that you did that? You're going to have a whole bunch of people happy for you. You know, the Bible says there's a party in heaven. I'm paraphrasing, but there's a party in heaven for those that receive Jesus. Heaven is waiting for those that don't know him. And I'm telling you, when you made that decision, heaven rejoices for your life. Amen. But there's other people that are watching right now with you and they will rejoice. We have online ministers that just want to encourage you and we want you to email us at connect at newdawnla.com. Connect at newdawnla.com. That's the second thing. Email us. We want to send you a couple of gifts to help you to grow spiritually. Amen. Man, I'm telling you, this word is so good. I'm so blessed. And I pray that you were too. You know, today we will be at uh, 1.30 p.m. uh, We will be over at Athens Park. Uh, off of El Segundo in the 110. It's going to be a great, great time. It's an outdoor service. And I want to let you know too, if you're concerned about heat or anything like that, we have this spot that is amazing where it's completely covered in shade. Two weeks ago when we were there, the service was amazing. Nobody was hot or nothing. It's an amazing spot out in the open, worshiping the Lord. And Tasia and the praise team do a great, great job. Amen. So we would love to see you over there. Amen. And uh, don't forget to just to email us for a prayer requests or anything. God loves you so much. I pray that you guys were blessed today in the name of Jesus. You have an amazing day on purpose. Amen.